in less than five hours, uh, the new album Goddess will be out. Yeah. Um, it will be already be out by the time this uh, interview goes up, of course. But first, so congratulations on the new album. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, what can you tell me about the the title of this album? Well, um, the, the thing about me and titles is that I usually have like a long list of like song titles, and usually we have like a title song on an album. Yeah. Um, and then we we have the music, and then I have a title, and then from that comes the lyrics and the vocals and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had this title for a very very long time. I thought it was would be uh, really cool to name a song or an album that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and um, then I um, I've, I've uh, for a long time been fascinated about this uh, Gnostic creation myth, um, or, or what you say. Um, I don't know how, if you know uh, about Gnosticism and all that, but there's I like... I know a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. it's like pre-Christian stuff. Mm. And in um, very, to make a long story short, and also I'm not an expert on it or have studied, it's just personal interest. Mm. But um, originally there's like the the one, you know, that everything comes from. And then you have like the lower levels of that, like arc aeons or aeons or whatever. Yeah, who are separate but also part of the one, and one of them is called Sophia, and one day she, uh, by mistake, like veers mm-hmm. a bit too far from the original one, and then by mistake she creates the material world that we are mm-hmm. now, and then realizing that she uh, messed up, she um, mm-hmm. creates the demiurge God, you know, mm-hmm. to keep an eye on everything, okay. and so on. So I. I thought that my fascination, even though like that Sophia thing is not a goddess, mm. I still thought that that this tackling this theme would be good for that title. You know, absolutely. I mean, I, I said before I know a little bit about Gnosticism, but I didn't know that. It just shows how little I know. And uh, you know, hearing that, I want to check out this uh, this story now. This more yeah. thing. So, and and the album. Um, and that's more specifically the song is probably going to be a, a sort of a, a great uh, gateway to that. Yeah. Um, the album as a whole, does it take influence from this story or is that just one of many uh, topics covered on the album? I would say uh, it's, it's one of one of many. Um, it's, it's, of course, played a huge part in the inspiration for the cover art. Yeah. Um, but it's the only song that takes inspiration from that on, on this album. I've been a bit inspired by it before, but it's the only one on this one. Okay. You mentioned the uh, the cover art there, which was done by Titan Arts or David from Titan Arts. Yeah. Um, it's a fantastic piece of work. It's so sort of vibrant and and grand, and it's, it's a real spectacle. You know? yeah, yeah. And uh, he's done some amazing work recently with bands like Cosmic Putrefaction, amongst others. You know? um, how did you come to find David? Yeah, well, um, originally we actually wanted a guy called, um, what's his name, Jose Gabriel, yeah, um, a guy from Peru, He's, okay. we, we worked with him before, he did the stuff, some stuff for the uh, our, the first album, Don't mm-hmm. or the first one as a band, mm-hmm. um, but he, he wasn't available, so then I was like, okay, what do we do? Mm-hmm. So we, you know, checked out uh, who we follow on Instagram, or, you know, cool artists, yeah. ask intermediate, do you know anyone, blah, 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 brainstorming. And then his name came up and it was like, he seems like a good fit, you know, like someone that would uh, fit the music well mm-hmm. and, um, and someone where we could like uh, throw uh, ideas at him and then he could like hopefully respond to it, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's how... Um, we work with him. Okay, excellent. I know, uh, well, I say I know, I believe you've done some artwork for the band before. So, um, w- was there a reason why you haven't done artwork since, or you wanted to find an outside artist for this? But, but I've done artwork for the album. I, I read that you had. Uh, maybe I did some of the okay. layouts for like the very early demos, you know, some some uh, cut and paste Xeroxing or something, you know. Oh, okay. But I, I'm horrible with a pencil or a, or a brush, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good with that. So, okay, yeah, bad information. I'm not very, I'm not very visually um, intelligent, or what you say. No, 
but evidently listening to uh, the songs released so far, we can tell that you are musically intelligent because these songs are very, very strong. They're very, very good. Um, and the band is very interesting um, to see where how far it's come and the, the changes musically. It has more of like a traditional heavy metal influence now, sort of along the lines of, say, Greek black metal, which has that Mm-hmm. influence in that melody to it, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm, not, uh, I'm not very familiar with Greek black metal. Okay. Although although recently I, I, I started checking out this uh, project called Macabre Omen, if you know about mm-hmm. them. I've I actually think the name. Yeah, I, I think it's like more or less a one-man thing, but I, I guess that the guy is actually located in the UK now, in oh, London. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's very grand and like epic black metal, very, very melodic. You might like okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Not good. But and there's something. There's a whole new uh, area for you to enjoy. Check out Greek black metal, man. It's amazing. Yeah, I know, uh, of course, about Rotting Christ, but that's about it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Necromantia as well. That's that's okay. another one. Nightfall. Yeah, I've heard about them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but with that being said, um, do you feel this is a very natural progression of sound for the band over time, or was this? A case of at one point you said, "Well, we should maybe try something new." Or... I think it, it's uh, natural. Um, mm. We try to do things as natural as possible. Mm. Um, we have never sat down and talked and decided on this. This is the kind of music we should play, or anything like that. Okay. You know, we just try and make it flow, and then with mm. whatever ideas, musically, uh, lyrically, whatever, we just try to make the best music and songs we we can from from that you know so uh yeah i guess i guess it's it's a natural progression mm. from that one. cool cool and yeah. um, what would you say makes goddess a different album from the wheel because obviously it's been about three and a half four years since the wheel was released so a lot of things have happened not just um personally but globally since then which um consciously or not often does play a factor in your approach to art yeah for sure um well i would say we we as as people have grown a lot since the last one i have for sure so if that will without a doubt uh factor in, mm-hmm. in, in the art you make um i also think we've become better players and we've become better at uh, our craft mm-hmm. and then also i think this time around we um haven't spent so much time to try and discover what we as a band are about. We know that now, you know, the first mm-hmm. two albums were like, okay, trying to maybe define, you know, who you are as a band, mm-hmm. but we know that now. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, it's, it's a little less anything goes nowadays, as, un, unless of course it's within the, the frame that we've built now. If yeah. you understand what I mean. Um, but, but, earlier then we were still building that frame you know yeah so um so we didn't spend so much time trying to like we we know what we're about now and we're mm. just building on that you know so um yeah the, the songs are way more complex uh like harmonically and structurally and uh, and that's a lot to do like to to make it, still make it fun and challenging for ourselves you know yeah, but we're also aware that we shouldn't make it too challenging, um, because then you know it's only the the uber geeks that that will uh, find some enjoyment in it. Of course, and you still have to um, be able to actually play the song. So when you make it yeah, super it technical, good, but... it still has to be a good song, you know. Yeah, like that's the most important. It has to be a good song. Usually, when I have some song ideas, I always test them out on a on an acoustic guitar, maybe with my voice. And if that still sounds good or has some kind of you know potency, then you know you're onto something. Very good. Um, what was the the recording process like for this album? Was this quite a lengthy um, ordeal, or were you able to get this recorded pretty quickly? It was done pretty quickly. We went up to Stockholm, Sweden. Okay. Um, we wanted to try and record out, outside of Copenhagen. We've only recorded here before. Um, because we thought maybe it was good to not have like distractions, friends, girlfriends, you know, yeah. um, whatever, to um, so we could really focus on it. But it wasn't long at all. 
we, we were there for 10 days. So okay. it was pretty fast. And with, with a bit of uh, hindsight, for me personally, I would have liked to have spent some more time to maybe, you know, work a bit more on guitar sounds and all that kind of stuff. But then again, recording an album, it's about making the best of the time you have and the, the gear you have and whatever, you know, and then it's like a, you know, a, a photo of time period, you know? When it's done, it's done and you have to move on. So um, it's, it's not like we spent months on end in the studio refining it was pretty fast we did a did basic tracking the first days and we usually do that all of us together in a room mm -hmm. many takes find the best ones and then um, we might uh, correct some mistakes if there are any and then it's it's dubbing you know so it was pretty fast and it was uh, yeah the, the guy we recorded with a guy called martin Erin krona He's done needle aim and in solitudes and lots of other cool things. He's a, a great guy, a, a character for sure, but uh, he knows what he's doing, so that's good. Good. Was he a, a big factor in the decision to record in Stockholm then, as opposed to another Danish city? Um, well, I, I don't. What do you mean? Like, if if he had any involvement in deciding it, or yeah. Um, no, not really. Uh, yeah. We originally wanted to record uh, down in Nuremberg in Germany. Oh, okay. But, um, I don't know if you know the German band called the Veninum. Uh, yeah, the name rings a bell. We, we toured with them, they're great friends, and we really like the sound of their album, uh, Trance of Death. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to record at the same studio they had used, actually, but the guy was um, not available when we oh. had to record. So then we kind of, it's kind of like with the artwork actually, you know, like we had an original plan and then that didn't work. So then we looked around and then Martin in Stockholm was available. So it's like, okay, let's do it. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Was there, um, like you say, you wanted to avoid sort of uh, distractions in that. Um, and as you said there, you wanted to go to Germany and then uh, Stockholm was the, the best option. Were you intent on getting out of Sweden to record th this album? Was it very important to get out of Sweden, uh, sorry, Sweden, Denmark, to <laughs> That's every Danish viewer calling me an arsehole now. But, uh, <laughs> um, oh, really? Yeah, so was it important to get out of Denmark to avoid distractions? Um, no, of course, we could have went to another town in Denmark, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's not so much being in Denmark that wasn't a distraction. It's more like being at home, you know. Okay. Like um, because up there we didn't really know anyone, and uh, so it's like, what what's there to do? Record, you yeah. know. So there you go. yeah, perfect. Yeah. And um, one thing I do know, or one thing I can't get confused with names with, is that you've got two videos out. I believe two for this album. Yeah. Yes. Um, I say I can't get confused because I've written them down. Uh, Fealty Thunder Whip and Kiss from a Knife. Yes. Uh, these are really cool videos. They're very kind of dark um, without being too uh, distracting. You know, they're, they're very much focused on the music. Um, why were these songs chosen to represent the album? Because they were the shortest. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, um, we 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 write our songs as we write them. It's the song that that dictates how it should be, how long it should be. I know mm -hmm. that might sound a little, you know, airy, or but you know, but that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. And then when we got the deal with Century Media, they were like, okay, there has to be two singles with videos, and it's like, okay, <laughs> take the shortest one. <laughs> but but with with that being said, then then they are good representations, I think um not only for the album but also for the band you know they're a good little um boil down of what we're about yeah. and uh, especially kiss from a knife is a is a good like a punch in the face you know like yeah. uh, like kick kicking the, the door open here we are you know listen to yeah. us and and thank you for liking the videos we made them ourselves oh wow um, yeah um both of them like recorded in one like evening or something 
And then uh, we invested in some kind of editing program and edited ourselves. I don't know if we'll do that again with the next, like, mm -hmm. let's say next album, next videos, whatever. But yeah. we just thought we wanted to get like into video making because then when we involve someone else, mm -hmm. then we know a little bit about it, if you know what I mean. So then, yeah. so then it's easier to maybe make suggestions for them or, you know, mm -hmm. that's why we did it ourselves. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Okay. And uh, just going forward now, um, what's the plans in terms of live shows? Do you have live shows lined up? Any festival appearances, anything like that? Um, not, not a whole lot. We are going on tour um, in two weeks' time. Actually, we're going to have like a release show concert here in Copenhagen, and then we're going out on the road here in Europe. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. no UK this time around. Um, I, Next. I, I suspect it's uh, uh, it's a, it's an effect of uh, Brexit. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, at least that's what our booker tells us. Yeah, but, uh, we're going out with uh, another Copenhagen band called Demon Head. Very close friends. We've known them for years. We wanted to tour with them for years, and finally yeah. we do it. So that's going to be, I think, seventeen or eighteen shows, mm -hmm. playing every night. Um, so that's going to be good. And then, then we've only got a, um, a a festival lined up in um, the south of France in September. Okay. I, I don't know if it's it's um, I can't pronounce the name of it, <laughs> but it's like it's out in the mountains and it's a bit you know ritualistic bonfires and all this kind of stuff. Okay. It's cool, but bands are playing like Conan and what else? Uh, yeah. Well, that so, sounds like a weird, perfect environment for you. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm looking forward to it. I yeah. think it would be great. But um, yeah, hopefully now the album comes out and then everyone wants to book us everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Well, yeah. all they need to do is listen to the album and then there you go. Yeah. Get them, get them on board. You are gonna make uh, you, you have to make people fall in love with you, you know? Yeah. Oh, it wasn't difficult. <laughs> 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 okay well thank you very much for taking the time to speak to me this evening i do appreciate it i'm sorry for the delay in uh getting everything going but at least no we worries. got it done yeah that's what matters yeah you look yeah. after yourself and good luck with the album you too thank you and uh, we hope to be in the uk sooner rather than later brilliant thanks a lot i mean your english is already better than mine so you'll be fine here there we go <laughs> okay bye now Take care out there.